If you've been creating basic bodies pattern without the boss darts, and you're also teaching others to do the same, you've got to stop, like, stop it now. This is 2022, you need to stop. Like, you need to stop. The foundation of the basic bodice pattern is not complete without the bust stars. Hey guys, my name is Lassie Travis. You're welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to draft the basic bodice pattern from scratch and also illustrate to you the usefulness, the importance of the bus darts. First of all, what is a pattern? A pattern is supposed to be a 2D template that represents on paper the woman's figure. The woman figure or the human figure on the other end is a 3D structure. So trying to fit a 2D template to a 3D structure, come to think of it, that's not going to work. That is where darts comes into play. Darts enables you to be able to fit the 2D templates to a 3D structure. The only exception to this rule will be when you're trying to um, create a dartless body, which is usually loose and just, you know, drapes down from the shoulder, or you're trying to create a dress pattern where you'll be using a stretchy fabric for. In that situation, we know the fabric stretches, so it's going to stretch and retract and sit comfortably on the woman's figure. Or you might say, oh, I've been drafting my pattern with just one dart, which is the waist dart. The human body is made up of 75% water, so water tends to take the shape of um, whatever you're pouring it into. That's the best explanation for it. So it's like forcing your body that contains water to fit a 2D template, which will definitely cause some kind of cures, which comes out like gaping all over your bodies. Well, I do hope at the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to see and learn the importance of the bus dart. And by the way, this is one of the easiest methods to create the basic body pattern that has the bus dart. So if this is something you're interested in, keep watching. On the top of my paper, I'm going to draw a horizontal line that equal my cross shoulder measurement for the back divided by two. This for me is um, seven and a half inches. From this top line, I'm going to measure down my back waist length, which is 17 inches, and then square horizontal line right across this point. This line is my back waist line. Now measuring upward from the waist line, I am going to mark my side length measurement. This for me is eight and a half inches. And then I'm going to square out a horizontal line across this point. This line is my bust line. Now from the top line, I'm going to mark down the measurement from the highest point of my shoulder to my bust point. This for me is 10 and quarter inches. Now this line becomes my bust level line. On the bust line, I'm going to mark my bust divided by four plus half of an inch. This for me is nine and a half inches. And then I mark that same measurement on the waistline and join these two points together with a straight line. Now on the bust line, I'm going to mark my shoulder measurement and then join those two points together. To draw the shoulder slope, divide the across shoulder measurement for the back into 10. So mine is 15. 15 divided by 10 is one and a half inches. Now subtract one eighth of an inch from that amount for ease. Now you're gonna come down from the top line along the vertical line with this amount. 
To draw the shoulder seam, you know, need to place your shoulder width measurement on the mark on the vertical line and then pivot your tape until 5 inches touches the shoulder line. Now connect both points together. Now for the back neckline, I'm going to measure upward from the waistline my nape to waist measurement, which is 16 and quarter inches. And from this point, I'll come in one inch and draw out a straight line to that one inch mark, then use my French cuff to complete the neck curve of the back neckline. Next, we'll move over to the arm O. I'll measure the remaining length of this line, mark the midpoint, and come in from that midpoint quarter of an inch. Then using my French curve, I'm going to draw the arm O curve from the bust line passing through the midpoint of the arm O we just marked upward to the shoulder line like so. Next, we're going to insert our dart. On the bust line, I'm going to mark my bust to bust divided by two, which is three and three quarter inches and mark that same figure on the waistline and join both points together. For my dart width for the back, I'll be using one inch. So I'm going to mark half of an inch on both sides of the vertical line on the waistline and connect these three points together to form the dart. Now on the waistline, I'm going to mark my waist divided by four plus one inch for the dart allowance. And this for me is eight inches. Now to draw the side seam, I'll connect this point to the arm O like so. Next, I'm going to measure the length of this line to make sure it equals the length of my side seam. And after doing this, I have one eighth of an inch in excess. So I'm going to take that from the arm O and lower the arm O with that one eighth of an inch like so. Added half inch seam allowance to the shoulder and to the side seam. I added three quarter inches a zip allowance. Moving to the front, I already copied the horizontal lines from the back, but we're going to add one more line, which is the front waist length. Mine is 18 inches, which is one inch longer than my back waist length. So I'll square horizontal line right across this point. To mark the bust line, remember on the back bust line we marked bust divided by four plus half of an inch. But for the front piece, we're going to mark bust divided by four plus three quarter of an inch. And we're going to mark that on the waistline for the front as well. Now we're going to join both points together. For the front shoulder, we're going to mark our front across shoulder measurement divided by two, which is seven and a quarter inches for me. And then you're going to mark that figure on the bust line. Remember your shoulder is wider at the back than the front. Now join both points together. Next for the shoulder slope, you're going to divide your front across shoulder measurement, which is mine is 14 and a half inches. I'll divide that by 10 and that gives me approximately one inch and three eighths of an inch. Now we'll follow the same process to draw the shoulder slope by just placing your shoulder seam measurement on the point on the arm side line and pivot it to touch the shoulder line. Now for the front neckline, I'll measure upward from the waistline, that is the front waistline, my center front length, which is 15 inches, and then I connect with the French curve to draw the neckline. Now connect this two points to draw the shoulder seam. To draw the arm O, divide the remaining length of the arm side line into three equal parts, and then 
come in from this point three quarter of an inch and using the French curve draw a curve line from the AMO passing through this three quarter inch mark upwards to the shoulder next on the waistline I'm going to mark my waist measurement divided by four plus half of an inch plus another one and quarter inches for dart and then connect this point to the arm o like so on the waistline I'm going to mark my bust to bust divided by two which is three three quarter inches and mark that same figure on the bust level line connect this two points together so to draw the darts, I'm going to mark the dart width, which is one and quarter divided by two on both sides of the vertical line, and then connect this three point to draw the front dart. Next, I'm going to measure the side seam length to make sure it's accurate, and I found that it's one eight inch longer. So I'm going to come down from the arm O with one eight and redraw the arm O. Next, I'm going to add seam allowance on the side seam and the shoulder seam. Okay, um, for the purpose of illustration, I'm going to fold this part of the front pattern. So we're just going to assume that the front waist length and the back waist length are equal. Okay, so I'm going to transfer this pattern to my muslin and come back to show you what it looks like before sewing this pattern I'm going to do one more thing and that would be to contour the on the bust area a little bit now from the highest points of the shoulder on the front bodies I'm going to mark down along the dart leg my shoulder to on the bust measurement which is 13 and a half now from the mid middle line of the dart i'm going to come out and mark my dart width which is 5 8 of an inch and also mark at the other side of the dart leg the same figure now from the bust point i am going to draw a curve to this point on the on the bust and then continue from this point down to the dart leg at the waistline so at this point i'm going to take this to my sewing machine and join the pattern pieces together this is what we have i'm just going to try this on okay here guys you can see there's a lot going on right here um we have gaping the the back looks nice as you can see um, the front waist looks quite shorter i'm going to turn to the side so you see the back is longer and the front is shorter we have lots of gaping on the arm o and also a little gaping on the back arm o as well So, but if I should pin this in place, you can see the body looks molded to my body, which looks really good and balanced. And we also have a little gaping on the back bodies. Um, so I'm going to take that as half of an inch on the back of the bodies pattern. So next, uh, what I'm going to do right now is to go back to my pattern and make the necessary adjustment, which would be the completion for the basic bodies pattern. So guys, this is the simplest method I know to add the bust dart, especially if your front waist length and your back waist length is the same. This is the simplest. Now on the back, but this I'm going to mark the midpoint of the shoulder and draw a line from this point to meet the tip of the dart. Now I'm going to come in from the midpoint of the arm O and draw a straight line to intersect with the broken line we just drawn. 
Now on both sides of this line, I'm going to mark quarter of an inch, which is going to be altogether half of an inch dart. After taking this, you actually need to close this dart and smoothen the armhole before cutting out your bodies. So take note of this when you're drafting your pattern, okay? The next step will be to take the measurement of the back arm O in exception to the dart and the seam allowance. So just take the arm O round measurement of the back and take note of that amount. This for me is eight inches approximately. Okay. Next, we're going to go to the front bodies and work on the front bodies. Next, I'm going to draw a line from this point on the arm side line to meet the bust point. Next, I'm going to take the arm O length, and this happens to be nine and one quarter inches. So, what we're going to do is to take the difference between the front and the back arm O and take it out on the front arm O as dart. So, this will be one and one quarter inches for me. So right now, I'm just going to fold my pattern paper, draw the dart. After drawing the dart, we need to fold the dart and redraw the arm O. And after redrawing the arm O, I am going to take the measurement first of my across front measurement from this point. To the center front just to make sure it's accurate okay you don't want to redraw the arm o and compromise your across um, chest measurement so next we'll take the the total length of the new arm o just to make sure we have eight inches because the aim here is to make the front arm o equal to that of the back arm o at least in some cases, you might have to take more out of the um, front arm o to make the front arm o shorter than that of the back arm o. So after taking this measurement, I found out that it was still it was still long, so I have to take out some more. So you need to go back and do this until you get the accurate arm o measurement, which for me is eight inches. Okay, and after the second time. I have the accurate measurement I need. So next I'm going to slash through the dart leg of the arm o dart. I'll slash through to the bust point. And then to transfer the arm o dart to the side seam, I'm going to measure down two and a half inches. You can measure two whatever you choose to. For this, I'll go two and a half for now. And then I'll draw a line to this point from the bust point and slash through this line. Next, I'm going to close the arm o dart to transfer the arm o dart to the side seam. And I'm just erasing the lines we won't be needing. Next, I'm going to slip a piece of paper to this opening and tape that in. Make sure you take note of your bust point when taping this in. Next, from the arm O, I'm going to mark down two inches along the side seam. Okay, now we want our side seam to equal that of the back side seam. The back side seam is eight and a half, so we want eight and a half. So I mark down from arm O two inches, then from waistline I mark upward six and a half inches. So whatever is remaining on the front side seam becomes the bust dart. So now I am going to come out from the bust point and draw the bust dart. So I came out from the bust point one and a half inches. Please refer to 
my tutorial on how to draft a body pattern to know why I came out with um, one and a half inches. So we're going to do the same thing for the waist dart. We're going to come down from the bust point one and a half inches before drawing the waist dart. Next thing, close the dart and true the side seam, redraw the side seam and then add your seam allowance. I'm going to add half inch seam allowance on just the side seam and the shoulder seam of this pattern because we're going to sew this and test the feet. Okay. Oh, I forgot to put my neck curve, so I'm going to do that and trim out the neckline and show that seam. So right now I'm going to transfer this pattern to the muslin and I'll come back to show you what it looks like after sewing. And one more thing I need to note here is that after transferring this to the muslin and after measuring the armhole, you notice that your armhole is longer than what you have on your pattern. This is because you're working on a fabric and one of the reasons is that you have cut through the bias grain of the fabric. So it's there's definitely going to be an increase on the armhole. Okay, now this is what the pattern looks like. It really looks good. It looks smoother to my body. And you can still notice that um, there is a little, just a little gape on the MO, which is fine. So that is going to serve as is, especially when you need to insert a sleeve. Okay. But when you're going for something like an otter neck or um, sleeveless, you might have to refer to your contour guideline to contour the bodies a little more okay so so far this proves to you that the basic body pattern is not complete without the bust dart and another thing you can see that the front and the back looks balanced than when i use the back waist length for the front and yeah i do hope you've been able to learn the importance of the bus dart on this tutorial and i do hope you find this tutorial helpful if you do remember to like this video leave a comment and subscribe to my channel and you can take it a little bit further and click on the notification bell so you can be one of the people that sees my video whenever i upload um thank you once again i'll see you next time bye, -bye.